Hey, my name's Ash. Uh, I'm a military consultant with Bohemian Interactive. I was a senior team leader uh, in the British military and I spent 10 years as a frontline soldier. Intrinsically, what I'm here to do is help you guys through the AARs, which are after action reports. Obviously, no plan survives uh, first contact, uh, so you're going to have to be able to adapt and overcome. Again, I'm nothing special. I just, I'm going to give you my experiences in a relevant way to Arma, uh, and hopefully afterwards you can go back and play the missions again from a new perspective uh, and have an entirely new experience uh, with some of the hints that I've given you or tips and tricks, etc. Reconnaissance. So today what we're going to talk about is obviously reconnaissance. There's three main points that I want to touch on. Uh, it's not going to be anything extensive, um, but it should help you along in the dynamic battlefield of ARMA. So small unit reconnaissance uh, is the first point, and then we'll go into tactical positioning of your teams. Uh, and then the third and last point will be tactical utilization of terrain and environment. Uh, okay, so I'll show you what I did uh, on the mission. Uh, so we started at this point here. Uh, that's where our team assembled uh, and was ready to move, uh, sorted out our kit, made sure we were good to go. So, afterwards we utilized the terrain and followed behind uh, the main feature. Um, as we came around, we ducked into the wood line as quickly as possible, uh, obviously maintaining no observation on us from the enemy. Uh, we snaked our way down through the trees and ended up down in this area here. Um, I found that I could get great eyes on and still have an escape route back up the tree line if I had to. Up is not ideal, but nonetheless, everything in front of us was enemy controlled. Uh, at this point, we had great eyes on to this area, and this afforded us uh, the ability to map the enemy patrol routes. Um, and from there, I split my team. I sent three call signs this way, uh, my MGs and my medic and myself and two other call signs push down here. At this point, we found our target here, which was uh, the missing patrol. I treated him uh, with first aid. Uh, he made his way back to cover, uh, and at that point, he was able to give us uh, vital information that led us to finding a mortar position. So basically, an overall picture of this is hiding. You're going to spend a lot of time hiding, you're going to spend a lot of time watching, um, and you're going to spend a lot of time learning what your enemy patrol routes are. Um, and the more information you have, the better you can kind of maneuver your way around them and avoid contact with them. With reconnaissance in, in this regard, um, you're going to want to keep yourself hidden, you're going to want to keep out of sight. If you fired your weapon, you failed as a reconnaissance soldier. All right, so we're going to touch on combined arms um, and in reference to this mission and how it applies. Um, combined arms isn't necessarily everything. Um, it's just operating with other units that aren't of your own. So infantry uh, utilizing armor uh, along with fast air, rotary, and naval even. And you put them all together, you got your combined arms. But you can also pick pieces and have a couple of them, and it'll be classed as combined arms. Nonetheless, as reference to the mission, um, I took the role of a sniper. There was a couple of different roles you could take. That was just the one I chose. Um, and after a short journey on an ATV, I had, a, or I ended up at a LUP on Hill, let's call it 156. Um, so from this position, I resupped, got whatever I needed. I then uh, bounced out and moved into another position where I could get eyes on to the convoy area, which I found very quickly, um, and a nice little bend where eventually a QRF uh, vehicle pair end up making their way. Now you have a chance to go drop some uh, explosives down there. I did. Um, vehicles came through, hit the first one, uh, and the second one got through. Uh, I plunked the driver, uh, gunner dismounted, he legged it. From there, I then uh, changed position. Again, utilizing cover, uh, staying in the tree lines. I got into another hill, uh, let's call it 182. Uh, and from hill 182, I was able to get eyes on the convoy. I then started thinning out the defenses that they had kind of organized around it. 
and then at this point it turned into a defensive role uh, and QRF rocked up uh, with a five ton and a bunch of lads. So they burst out and started moving into position. At this point I was able to utilize artillery. I dropped artillery on them, uh, thinned them out, and then used that sound as cover uh, to get more rounds downrange. Something to note uh, is positive target uh, uh, identity basically. Um, it was an interesting mission where there was a lot of enemy call signs that were operating in the same kit as friendly call signs. Uh, so you really had to make sure that your positive ID was, was on point, like spot on. The method that I used was to take my time and observe, uh, see who they were working with. Uh, if I couldn't get uh, a good eyes on, I would test and adjust so I'd find a new position uh, at a different angle, maybe closer if I could, and then uh, observe. Uh, if in doubt, don't fire. The other thing that I was utilizing in this was a range card, uh, and with the range card, uh, it was very easy to map out uh, where everything was, and I could then call in artillery uh, rapid. Okay, so from there, um, everything was basically sorted. The combined arms was artillery, sniper, and dismounts, or infantry, working together. Um, that is obviously a very big subject, um, which includes everything, but in this case, in relevance to this mission, uh, it was a nice small force. In conclusion, some key points to remember. Avoid engaging the enemy. You choose when the fight starts. Make sure you control that at all costs. Use the terrain for cover. So obviously minimize your exposure to the enemy by putting terrain between you and him. Take well-placed shots. Every shot has to count. None of this blind fire stuff. That only happens in Hollywood. Positively identify your targetry. Um, it is paramount that you make sure you're shooting at the enemy. Map your enemy's movements and positions. Uh, basically, by doing so, you control the battlefield, or it helps you control the battlefield, um, and minimizes any surprises. All right, gents. Um, well, that's been the conclusion. Uh, I just wanted to go over some very key points uh, in reference to ARMA and the ARMA universe. Um, I know I've been playing the game for a while, and I know you have too. I can only give you my views of it and how I would have gone about these missions. I'm sure you have your own experiences. Many of you may even be veterans yourself. Uh, and as such, you'll have a completely different approach or something similar. At the end of the day, it's up to you. It is a game, and it's to be enjoyed. And again, yeah, just enjoy yourselves. Hopefully, I've given you something you can use. Cheers, lads, and thanks for your time. Hey, my name's Ash. Uh, I'm a military consultant with Bohemian Interactive. I was a senior team leader uh, in the British military and I spent 10 years as a frontline soldier. Intrinsically, what I'm here to do is help you guys through the AARs, which are after action reports. Obviously, no plan survives uh, first contact, uh, so you're gonna have to be able to adapt and overcome. Again, I'm nothing special. I just, I'm going to give you my experiences in a relevant way to Arma. Uh, and hopefully afterwards you can go back and play the missions again from a new perspective uh, and have an entirely new experience uh, with some of the hints that I've given you or tips and tricks, etc. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, small team tactics, small unit tactics. Um, Generally, it's related to SF, or Special Forces, um, Special Operations. Um, there's a lot of really good resources out there on the internet, a lot of really talented uh, operators that have gone over a lot of this stuff, and if you really want to uh, get little bits and bobs that could help you in the future too, go to those resources. There's Again, there's really good ones. Um, in reference to ARMA, what we're going to go over today is how I employed what I know of uh, small team tactics into uh, the mission where you had to attack the anti-tank uh, missile systems or weapon systems. Um, so there was a couple of positions. Uh, there was also a tank that showed up at some point uh, where you had a artillery that you could call in on it. Um, at least that's where I used my artillery. It was the best, best option. Get rid of that tank. Um, prior to getting there, you would spend weeks, months, whatever time you had to uh, get in an OP and find 
everything you could. Um, you're finding patrol routes, routines, habits, who's friends with who, um, every single little detail you can. Uh, any injuries, sore feet, blisters, you can see all of these things as, as you're observing and, get, and utilizing those superior optics uh, to find out what's going on. All of these things will help you um, in destroying your enemy uh, when it comes down to it. The other thing is, is you are a small unit, you don't have the resources for a sustained fight, so you want to hit as fast as possible, maximum aggression, um, hit them so hard their heads spin, and then get the hell out of there as quickly as possible as well, uh, and basically vanish. Think like a ninja. Um, nonetheless, uh, how I attacked this mission uh, was I got my eyes on, I observed what I had to observe, um, I hit the AT positions, I hit the tank, uh, and then I pushed up towards Houdan. At this point, we knew there was a QRF uh, based in the farm. Um, and because we were moving uh, fast at this point, because we had already made a bunch of noise, um, obviously just prior to that, you're using all your, your, your senses. Uh, hearing is a big one. You want to make sure that you're listening as much as possible. Um, you can hear vehicles traveling up and down roads. You can hear people talking. You might even be able to hear uh, kit jiggling around. Uh, we do a thing called a jump test, make sure we don't make any noise when, when we move. Uh, most armies don't. Nonetheless, we pushed up, we set in a snap ambush, uh, we didn't have a lot of time, we were exposed uh, from Houdan, um, but nonetheless we put in a quick ambush in this area here. Uh, there was a bit of hard cover uh, and this, this hill kind of didn't afford them the ability to uh, get away from us without us putting rounds down range. Uh, we sorted them out, we did the follow through, and then we moved on Houdan to assist the main body uh, of the operation pushing up that way. Um, we started employing a CQC, um, but tried to minimize it as much as possible. The main force was coming up, and we just kind of married up with them. Uh, so nonetheless, small team tactics, something to note is uh, maximum aggression and get the hell out of there. Uh, so you're, you decide when the fight starts and ends, uh, basically end of story on that front. All right, so what we're going to go over on this one is uh, Fibwa. Um, in this mission, we took the role of a regular infantry. Um, so I'll just kind of go over what I did, and uh, hopefully we can work on that. Uh, some things to keep in mind, uh, the six Ps, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Uh, so a lot of planning goes into any operation. Uh, you put the maximum effort into that, and then uh, you train hard and fight easy sort of thing. So I'll just show you the route that I took. Um, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. So my team started here. Uh, we were on a hilltop. We had a bit of eyes on. Uh, from there, unfortunately, there was nothing more for us to do but just kick it across the uh, open ground. Um, so we tried to stay uh, out of sight as much as possible, followed this route here, uh, tried to avoid this built-up area, and from there we checked any casualties, made sure we checked our ammo states, uh, and pushed up from there to this area. Our main objective was the fuel point, so unfortunately we kind of had to push through. There was really no other options except for engaging it, uh, in Fibwa. Um, so anyway, we fought the enemy here. We kicked up. We found a transport area. There was quite a few trucks. And then from there, uh, we tried to use as much of the train as possible uh, and not expose ourselves and hit the fuel point, uh, generally from like a southwestern kind of direction. Something to note, complacency kills. Watch those doors, watch those windows, watch every angle that you possibly can. Uh, as cliche as it sounds, keep your head on a swivel kind of thing. Make sure you're switched on. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you can avoid it, avoid it. But in this situation, that was our objective. So we had to get it done. Uh, cheers. So we're going to sum up with the conclusion uh, and key points of uh, Abu Afibua and small team tactics. So basically things to keep in mind, maximum aggression, stay with your teams, work together, complacency kills, so make sure you're covering those arcs. When utilizing grenades, make sure that there is no sieve pop uh, in the area or in, in that room or in that built up area. With small teams, remember that you start the fight and you end the fight. You hit them hard and you get the hell out of there um, because you don't have the ability for a sustained fight. Other than that, uh, keeping those in mind uh, will give you the advantage and you'll be able to, or you should be able to smash these missions out. All right, cheers lads and thanks for your time.
You're right, gents. My name's Ash. Quick intro. I'm a military consultant with Bohemian Interactive. Uh, I served 10 years uh, as a frontline soldier with Sabre Squadrons within the British Army. Uh, I did Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and intrinsically, I'm here to uh, show you some AARs, or after action reports. It's going to be a brief version of them, and we'll just touch on key points. Um, I'll utilize my experience and show you how I was able to successfully complete these missions, and hopefully you can take something away from it. Uh, something to note is that no plan survives first contact. Uh, things will go loud, things will get messy, and you have to be able to adapt and overcome uh, and, and get through those and successfully reach your objective. So let's get on with it. We're going to go over uh, E&E quickly in relevance to this mission. So in this one, we did do a large uh, airborne kind of operation. Uh, we promptly got shot down, uh, and your character woke up on the beach, surprisingly unscathed. There was a church to our south and a turbine to our west, uh, and I'll just show you a quick route that I took that seemed to work for me um, and kept me out of the enemy's peripheral and line of sight. I went around and skirted on the outside of the hills, uh, keeping it between or keeping them between myself and the enemy. Um, I then skirted up past another windmill uh, and th past four uh, obvious buildings. There was some uh, sounds heard from one of the buildings, uh, and on further investigation, I found a sniper pair. Uh, in reality, if you heard anything, you would just uh, bin it and and get out of there as quickly as possible and quietly as possible. Uh, but I, the sniper pair was there. I didn't want him to engage any of my friendly call signs, uh, so I removed them as a threat. Uh, they had some Gucci kit on them, so I acquired that uh, and got on my merry way. Uh, I then hit the road, uh, kept my distance away from it just in case any mounted patrols proceeded. Um, um, I then found some cover around this area, which then allowed me to proceed down through a whole bunch of bushes uh, to a friendly call sign group, uh, and then I helped them in driving back an attack. I came from uh, two directions, from what I remember, and we drove them off, which was, again, good. I then made my way down to the surf club, which was our ERV, uh, and busied myself by assisting in, in treating casualties. In reality, you're going to be doing this on your own. E&E &E is a very one-person show. You'll do whatever you have to to survive, um, and you need to get yourself away from the enemy and into some position where you can get rescued. I'm going to cover AFV uh, operations or armored fighting vehicles, something near and dear to my heart, uh, in reference to the attack on Chalkia. Uh, we started roughly in this area with the vehicle. Um, we pushed up to this hill uh, and got overwatch. Uh, we utilized our superior optics. Um, basically when operating with armor, uh, you're going to take, uh, you have a lot more things to take in, in, into consideration. Uh, when working closely with infantry or figure 11s, you want to make sure that you're not driving over them. You may laugh, but this does happen. Uh, nonetheless, we got our overwatch, we started finding targetry. Uh, we prioritized that targetry um, as it presented. Um, and we utilized our superior firepower from the main armament and our s superior ammunition uh, capacity with the coaxial and uh, we threw rounds downrange, uh, softening up the target uh, before, or the objective before our infantry moved in from the LZ. Um, so the infantry moved in, or su supporting infantry moved in from the LZ uh, and we basically adjusted fire, so we reversed up. Uh, again, maintaining our turret in the direction of the enemy, uh, we proceeded down this area. Uh, around the buildings, keeping our distance, um, and came up this way, past some more buildings into our next firing position. Uh, once in the firing position, we again started prioritizing new targetry as it presented. Uh, our infantry started fighting through. Um, it was here that we realized that any more rounds going down range may or uh, hit our friendly call signs. Uh, so we held fire um, and just observed. Uh, we used the net to communicate to our, our friendly call signs what was where. Um, we did happen to see an AA system, uh, a mobile, and instantly this took priority. Uh, so we did plunk some rounds down range. We disabled it. Um, we moved into a, a more uh, suitable firing position uh, where we were keeping in mind our, our fall of shot, uh, again, keeping our infantry and friendly call signs 
uh, safe. Now, to our north, uh, the MSR ran uh, away from us. Uh, we had heard that there was SF teams operating there, um, and anything coming down that, such as a large QRF force, uh, they would try to deal with as effectively as possible, at least thin it out before it got to us. As such, with armor, the overall thing to take from this is uh, armor is big, it's mean, in that you don't want to generally take it into built-up areas without uh, a lot of infantry support. I myself avoided it at all costs. Um, maybe sitting on the outskirts, maybe sitting down at the end of a road, keeping myself away from any uh, building heights, etc., windows that are accessible. Also, the mindset that I took uh, when I was uh, a tanky was I'm a 72-ton sniper. It's something that uh, helped keep me in the mindset of how to utilize my tank to the best of my abilities or the best of its capabilities. Um, and that was take your shot from cover, nice and hidden, extract out, find another position. You're constantly jockeying for position. Um, and that's something that I found actually works very well in Arma. Um, so it might be a trick that you might want to try if you haven't been trying it. Um, and other than that, that's all I got for you. Cheers. So avoid the enemy. When you're uh, committed to E&E, &E, at all costs, try to minimize exposure to the enemy. Regroup. So again, with E&E, &E, uh, get yourself to the ERV as quickly as possible, obviously keeping the first rule in mind. Uh, reference AFEs and uh, operating with armor or in armor as a crewman. Um, try to avoid built-up areas at all costs. If you can, strategically place yourself on hills uh, or something that utilizes your superior firepower uh, and optics. With armor, you have uh, dynamic target prioritization. So you're gonna be choosing targets as they present themselves, but there is a very strict way that you would do that, uh, prioritizing tanks first, uh, or AA if they are there, uh, AT, uh, and then making your way down uh, to infantry. Uh, generally, your tank's immune to any small arms. Again, with tanks uh, or armor, think about yourself as a 72-ton sniper. That mindset will help you uh, employ proper tactics uh, when using the superior firepower of the main armament and superior number of rounds that the coax uh, can carry. With tanks, range and optics, uh, very important. You have some really good thermal systems, you have some really good night vision systems, and your day TV or uh, day sights are, are very high powered, uh, 14 plus uh, magnification. So use those. Your weapon systems can keep up with them, uh, so use it to your advantage because the infantry definitely does not have it. All right, lads, so cheers for your time. Uh, thanks a lot.